Styling Windows Managers on macOS are trendy. I mean, you seem to love that video. And indeed, a good Dialing Window Manager can truly transform the way you work on your computer. It offers a much more keyboard-centric workflow and a clean, efficient way to manage windows. And while macOS 15 brings some window management features, <laughs> It's nothing like the real Dining Window Manager experience. So Yabai is one of the popular options and it has completely changed my productivity on macOS. But when I mention it to you, you seem pretty insisting of me trying the new kit in town, Aerospace. So over the past months, I tested it and today I will not only walk you through getting started, but also share my honest thoughts about it. And spoiler alert, I would definitely recommend Aerospace as a great first Dining Window Manager on macOS. However, there are still some features from Yabai that I've been missing in aerospace. And of course, if you want to jump straight into my dot files like madman, the link is in the description. So to get started, you can install aerospace through Homebrew, which is a popular package manager on macOS. I put the link in the description if you don't know about Homebrew to set it up. But basically, you can just copy paste the one line installation in the GitHub readme of aerospace and it's just do a brew install with the package location and you mostly just done. Once you install it, you can launch Aerospace like any regular application under the application folder. Here I'm using Raycast or you can use your Spotlight shortcut to launch the application. So now you see that my Windows layout has just changed. I had three windows and they're all nightly organized uh, because of Aerospace. And if you can see on the taskbar, I have it here with a number that has appeared. And that's the second major feature of uh, Tiling Windows Manager is that aside from the Windows layout and have allowed you to have a Windows mess, uh, you have different space or here workspace. So on the opposite of Yabai, which I mentioned, which is another Tiling Window Manager for macOS, um, Aerospace doesn't use the spaces feature from macOS. Um, that you know i can see here that's that's the space and i can add another space instead of that it's create a virtual a workspace as it call it and you can have uh, as many as workspace that you want i specifically limited here to uh to seven and you can see also like which screen is currently actually also selected on which space so this is the building is a uh, my main laptop uh, screen basically, and this is my main screen actually, uh, which is a Dell screen. So from the taskbar, you can see that. So I can switch to another space. So you see the number here has changed. I can go on workspace three, and I was on the workspace one where there is my terminal and uh, browser open. So let's dive into the configuration file, which is located commonly into your uh, .config uh, folder, then aerospace folder, and let me open directly uh, NeoVim, uh, and it's a tunnel file. Um, we're gonna go to my configuration file and then gonna go to the different things I'm used, uh, but you can uh, start from a good default configuration file. And this one is also provided um, by uh, Aerospace. So on the, on the documentation website, you have default config. And basically you can just uh, copy paste uh, this line of code, which is copy uh, the default configuration file, which is uh, install actually into the application to your uh, default home folder or here in the config aerospace uh, setup. So coming back to my configuration file here. So into the default configuration file, as you can see, uh, because I've mostly edited uh, this one, you have a lot of comments, you understand which parameter uh, do. But the first one you might want to do is start at logging automatically. So the first thing I kind of like uh, disable is using the accordion modes, where basically when we you had a different window, you can see a bit the overlay and the padding on a corner. I actually just don't like it. I either prefer to have it as a tile where I have a few vision on that, or I use the full screen as you can see here. 
uh, temporarily to zoom into one. We're gonna come into that uh, just later. So yeah, Tal's accordion is basically the two kind of like uh, layout that aerospace can show and how it's organized basically the window is acts like tree. So here, for example, I have a root node containing uh, three windows and each one is using you know the tiles representation and I can either have the representation uh, horizontally or vertically or a split of them. So let's continue about the configuration file. So here exec on workspace so Aerospace has a couple of uh, callback events. There is uh, three of them, I believe. And this is one which is doing when there is a workspace change. So whenever there is a change in the workspace, so if I'm going to one or two, uh, this command is being executed. And you can, you know, be a bit smart into scripting and execute anything you want. We'll come back into that later. So next we have the configuration regarding padding on the windows that you would have between the windows on top etc. Next is uh, basically the shortcut and you see there is a different mode. Um, so here the mode's main binding is basically the one that is accessible you know by default without any shortcut and you can create uh, other modes that you can access for example to service then you're gonna enter a shortcut to uh, enter that mode and then you have a collection of shortcuts for uh, this specific mode. For example, for service, if you want to reload specific configuration, but it's not something you use, you know, uh, commonly uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you can also uh, basically create a separate mode for that. So on the main mode, basically the most important thing for me is using the application shortcut. I talk about that in a separate video, but it is really important for me to just have shortcut on apps so that I never have to find where the app is in which workspace and also just to, to launch it and go through it. So here is to uh, my different application that I'm using and my uh, shortcut to it. You see, I have also a couple of things regarding the layout. So uh, the all E is to change the layout from horizontal to vertical. So if I do this, you see uh, I change everything horizontal. The other one that I'm using all the time is basically to enter full screen. So I already show you, but I'm just using all F here. Uh, to enter uh, temporarily a uh, window in full screen mode. The other one, which is super important, is uh, the focus. So I'm doing Alt. Uh, I'm I'm basically is supporting V motion. So that's pretty common in a Windows Styling Manager. So you see here, I'm focusing and changing uh, the different window. To see it focus on the border, I'm using Jenkins Borders, which is another print source project. I'll put the link in the description. Finally, if I do Alt Shift, I move the window. So if I do Alt Shift left, I'm gonna move this one to the left or I can move it to the right. So you see, I have much more flexibility. So you can resize, I can add this one a bit or, you know, um, down, so that's for this shortcut. Then I have shortcut for the different workspace. Typically when I'm using only one screen or two even, uh, seven workspace is basically the sweet spots for me. Then I have Alt Shift to move one node to another workspace. So for example, if I do uh, Alt Shift 2, I'm gonna move this one to uh, the workspace 2 now. You see, so I was on one. Here you can see in the uppercase uh, on, the, on the taskbar and two, no, it's over there. Let me put it back on the one. And then we have, uh, you know, enter another service mode, as I told you, so Alt Shift Colon with a specific uh, configuration or, you know, shortcut command. In a nutshell, the most shortcut I'm using is the application shortcut, a workspace shortcut, um, changing the layout from horizontal to vertical, moving an application to another workspace and using the zoom, the full screen, basically. Other things important is that because I'm using seven uh, workspace, I try to regroup them by team. And for that, you can force certain application to open into specific workspace. So here, Brave is always on, on workspace one. Here, my terminal, I actually just moved to, because I didn't update the, uh, the configuration is uh, in two, then VS Code and the others uh, on the different workspace. Finally, uh, the 
Also, interesting thing, which is, uh, by the way, much easier to handle than I had in Yabai, is that I'm using a two-screen setup and I'm forcing certain workspace into a specific uh, display. So here you see the first five are on the main and uh, six and seven are on the secondary. So that means when I connect my uh, laptop, basically, I'm gonna always have the six and seven on my screen of the laptop. And that's pretty handy because that's how I use to move application. If I want to move it to another screen, I basically move it to another workspace. So that's it for the configuration. You can do much more, but that's, that's about it. So let's come back to the callback event that I'm using with Sketchy Bar. I'm going to launch a Sketch Bar on Purpose here because I stop it to for the quick start and it let me also hide the menu bar that I, what I usually do for by default. All right. All right. So this is usually how I work. So you see the Mac OS actually taskbar is still there with aerospace, but I have a much more vision on what I have actually running into the different space. So here, one, two, three, four, five. So for example, if I open Slack, you see that is going to open in the workspace which is its default workspace allocation. And I have a vision on the logo. And also if I switch, for example, to Brave, you see that I'm also saying on the workspace one, what app here uh, basically is being uh, focused right now. So here it's Ghosty. And if I switch, you have the logo Brave. So this taskbar configuration with Sketchy Bar is my setup for the past, I think, almost two years now uh, that I use in Yabai and I ported it to Aerospace. And that's basically how I kind of survive with like different workspace is that even if I have shortcut on application, sometimes you're going to move things here and there. Uh, you don't know what you open or what you need to close. And this is just give you a nice overview always at a glance on what is running, uh, where is it running. And of course you can check out my dot file, which is also including how Sketchy Bar is interacting with Aerospace. All right, so far installation was super easy, no SIP disabling like Yabai. And with Aerospace, there is just a single configuration files for settings and shortcuts, which keeps your setup clean. But is it too good to be true? Well, personally, I like to have a clear overview on what's running in my different workspace. And while I allocated specific apps to specific workspace, it's always best to have everything at a glance. So this is where Sketchy Bar has been an essential tool for me. And in a nutshell, it's a custom bar where you can roughly display anything you want through plugins you declare in Bash or with Lua. However, this is where I start to encounter a a lot of pain we have aerospace and mostly because aerospace is still quite new to be honest as of making this video there are three main points in my friction log the first is that sketchy bar and aerospace wouldn't work together so aerospace handles display with different spaces differently and as noted in the documentation the recommendation is to disable displays have separate spaces features in macOS but in a latest sketchy bar version it actually wouldn't work if that feature was disabled. <laughs> So I was lucky because when I was trying Aerospace a week later, this issue got solved. So yeah, this first point is not really valid anymore or kind of. Because the second thing I'm missing is my macOS full screen feature. So I use multiple screens, uh, including a teleprompter when recording videos or doing interviews and calls. And not being able to use the native macOS full screen feature is a major pain point for some of my workflows. So this is because when you disable the function displays have separate space and you go on full screen on one while the other monitors becomes unavailable. So the current workaround is to disable iris space when I need full screen functionality or to actually enable these features. But you know, I've seen some glitches in iris space when I do so. And finally, the third pain point is uh, the lack of event callback. And this is probably my biggest request. 
I was used in nearby to have a robust set of events that I could listen to enabling powerful scripting. For example, with Sketchy Bar, you could update apps icons depending on their workspace or detect when an app was shut down or open. And at the moment, Aerospace only provide three callback events which is quite limited. And to port my Yabai and Sketchy Bar setup, I had to implement a workaround that re-triggers a listing of all the apps whenever there is a workspace change. That's the best I found. It's not ideal, but since there are no callbacks for other events, I'm forced to use kind of a manual trigger. So Yabai or Aerospace? So all in all, it's great to have more options for tiling Windows Manager on macOS. I actually asked the both creators uh, what was the reason and the fault in terms of design, and it's pretty different. Yabai offers strong integration with macOS's native spaces features, so making some workflows smoother. However, it requires you to disable SIP, which can be a deal breaker, especially if you are on a work machine and you just can't do it. And also relying on macOS native uh, spaces features can be limiting since you're subject to Apple updates and changes. On the other hand, Aerospace offer a much simpler setup with its abstraction of workspace, but it currently lacks some features and show its early stage nature. And that's totally fine because the creator still considers at this point of this video, Aerospace as beta. In any case, we have more options to improve productivity on macOS as developers and this is fantastic and I'm excited to see how both tools are going to evolve. So take care of your workspace and I'll see you in the next one.